Welcome to In the Workshop, checking the threads of the bushes on the small model steam boiler, followed by fitting blanking plugs and performing a hydraulic test. Before starting the job of checking the threads and giving the boiler a hydraulic test, it's time for a visual inspection. One small part of the silver soldering doesn't look as good as the rest, so I wanted to have a closer look and check that it was OK. And during the inspection process, I had a look to make sure that it was silver solder and not soft solder. And the good news is, it's silver solder. Had it have been soft solder, the episode would have ended here. Possibly when this boiler was silver soldered, it may have been the other way up. And this is probably where the silver solder ran slightly. When I turned the boiler the other way round to look at the other end, that's fine. I used a selection of taps and blanking plugs to obtain the thread forms. The larger of the two bushes on the back head for the water gauge are threaded quarter of an inch by 32 threads per inch. And the two bushes at the front of the boiler for the check valves are also threaded quarter by 32 threads per inch. There's a smaller boiler bush on the back head for the water gauge union and that is threaded 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch. Along the top of the boiler are two more bushes. One is threaded 5 sixteenths of an inch by 32 threads per inch and the other one is threaded 5 sixteenths of an inch by 26 threads per inch. If the boiler passes the hydraulic test I will fit a steam tap into the 5 sixteenths by 32 bush and a safety valve into the larger 5 sixteenths by 26 threads per inch bush. In my workshop I have a long plastic drawer which is full of boiler blanking plugs with various popular thread forms. I found the ones I required and fitted them to the boiler. And as always to prevent leaks I fitted the blanking plugs using some Loctite 542. To fill the boiler I'm using this funnel with a piece of silicone rubber tube on the end of it. As you can see in the other bush I've fitted a double union ready to connect my hydraulic test rig to it. It's extremely important to make sure that the boiler is full to the top with water with no air whatsoever remaining in there. The reason for this is simple, you can't compress water. But on the other hand air is compressible and this is the last thing you want. If the boiler was to fail catastrophically, all that would happen if it was full of water is I would get wet. But if it was full of compressed air to 160 pounds per square inch, the explosive decompression would be very dangerous indeed. Why am I using the piece of silicone rubber on the bottom of the funnel? That's so I can immediately stop the flow of water from the funnel when water starts to come out of the other fitting. It's to stop water from going all over the boiler and all over the bench. Here once again with the help of some Loctite 542, I'm fitting the last of the blanking plugs. As you can clearly see there is some water on the boiler and I will be removing this before the hydraulic test. During the hydraulic test, which you'll see very shortly, I will be looking for leaks and it's very difficult to identify leaks if the boiler and surrounding areas are wet to start with. With the help of this piece of cloth, I removed all the water from the boiler and the surrounding area. Time to get out my boiler test rig. Here it is. I'm putting some water in the tank. Before connecting the pipe to the boiler, I move the pump handle to make sure that the pipe is full of water, and it is. It's obviously quite important to make sure that this union is tight, otherwise I will get a shower bath. Now all I have to do is move the pump handle and watch the pressure rise. I'm going to use this boiler in a steam plant with a Cheddar Models Puffin oscillating cylinder engine. And the boiler's working pressure, when it's in steam, will be 50 pounds per square inch. But I'm testing this to 160, which is over twice the working pressure of the boiler. Generally, I will always test to this pressure. That's because the working pressure of most of the boilers I use is 80 pounds per square inch. Just to show that I'm not cheating by putting freeze frame on the needle, here you see my stopwatch on the phone running. I can't remember how long you're supposed to test these things for. I'm going to test it under pressure for 12 minutes. 
and that's under hydraulic pressure at twice working pressure. I didn't just sit here looking at it, I went into the house and had a bit of dinner. And when I came back, the phone had a blank screen because it had gone to sleep. Once I used my fingerprint on the home button, the phone opened up. And by now the stopwatch was showing over 11 minutes. Time to drop the pressure. The valve on the outlet of the pump is to stop the pump from leaking the water back into the water tank. As you can see, as I release the valve, the pressure does start to drop. But to drop it properly, I need to undo the union on the boiler. You will notice that before I undo the union, the area around the boiler is perfectly dry. Now it's not so dry, it's quite wet. I would say that this small boiler has passed the hydraulic test with flying colours. The annoying thing is though, I need to have this boiler tested by an appointed boiler tester at either the club that I'm a member of or at my friend Simon Hudson's place called the Steam Workshop. If I build this boiler into a marine steam plant connected to the small Cheddar Puffin steam engine, I will require a valid boiler certificate in order to sail the boat at the model boat club that I'm a member of. I don't know how this is going to progress at the moment. Either way, the boiler is going to need a chimney. This is a square piece of mahogany. I'm not suggesting that I fit a square chimney to the boiler. This is just to show where the chimney would fit. I'm already formulating a plan for a chimney and combined superheater unit to fit at the front of the boiler here. The only problem is I have too many jobs currently ongoing, including finishing two Stuart triple expansion engines. I may actually sell one of those, which seems to work okay but needs a bit of a rebuild. Although in the meantime, I may just show you how I make and fit the chimney to this. You know what they say, variety is the spice of life, and I get plenty of that in a small way. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing